Hi, my name is Tracy and I'm a rising high school junior that's interested in computer science, AI, and product design. Hi, my name is Divya Sundar. I'm a rising senior in high school and I'm interested in computer science and I play the flute. My name is Selena Gabriel. I am a rising junior in college interested in data sciences intersection with the social sciences and security. And we work together to create a natural language processing model or an NLP model that classifies toxic comments. And we, won we worked under Prithvi Shippi, a data scientist at SAP Concord. So the problem that we chose to target was online hate and cyberbullying. One in 10 young people have been exposed to online bullying and there's clear correlations between cyber hate and mental health problems. And this is especially um, concerning because there's a lack of, moderate, of moderating of the comments that are usually toxic and can be harmful towards um, young adolescents. And um, this is what our machine learning our natural language processing model hopes to solve as it'll identify these toxic comments. So to create our NLP model, we took a five-step approach. So the first step was just getting the data and cleaning it. And then we moved on to tokenizing and pre-processing our data. And then we vectorized our data before trading that data with a machine learning model and determining which algorithm was the best fit. And then after we um, did that, we tuned our model for accuracy and then implemented it with a web application called Flask. So some of the technologies and architectures that we used were Jupyter Notebook for writing our code in Python. And um, some of the Python libraries that we used were NTLK, Pandas, NumPy, and SKLearn. And these are just some of the common data science um, libraries. And we implemented our model with the web application Flask. So the first step is get, getting the data and cleaning it. So we removed white spaces, we lowercased our text, and we removed non-alphanumeric characters. So you can see the code on the side, which is basically just standardizing our data. So then when we put it into the machine learning model, um, it can input it um, a little bit easier. And step two is tokenization and stripping the columns. So we um, did stemming and lemmatization, which is finding the roots of words. We removed stop words to just focus on, on the main words of our data. We did tokenization, which is dividing our, our phrases and comments into individual words. And we stripped the data of other, com of other columns. So our data set had multiple categories, one of them which was toxic. And so um, our project was just focusing on measuring the toxicity of the comments. And step three is vectorization. So after we um, turned our phrases into individual words, we counted the frequency that these words had in specific sentences and in the data as a whole. So through vectorization and count vectorizer, which you can see on the right, we found a term frequency inverse document frequency, which, is, which combines both of those frequencies to find how often words were coming up in our data set. So after we got the data and pre-processed it, tokenized the data and as well as vectorized it, our next step was to um, train it with a machine learning model. So for this step, we utilized three different algorithms. So we utilized Naive Bayes on logistic regression and random forest. So for Naive Bayes, this was our first algorithm that we tried. Um, the purpose of doing these three algorithms was to see which algorithm would actually yield the um, best results based on our specific data, since um, the machine learning model would be best fit for different types of data. So um, for Naive Bayes, what essentially what this uh, model did was it used the concept, as you can see on the left, of the Bayesian uh, algorithm, as you can see there. Um, it used the idea that given that x in the, in the formula is true, what is the probability that c will happen? 
So it uses that formula and it basically for our situation, it transforms it so that it's like given the fact that the data that we have already fed our machine learning model has been toxic or non-toxic what is the probability of a comment being put into our machine learning model being toxic or non-toxic so this is just one way that the machine learning model can recognize the toxicity of a comment if we were to put it in and the other algorithm that we used was logistic regression, which is a common machine learning um, algorithm that is used for classification problems like with classifying toxic comments. So basically, um, logistic regression um, separates the data sets based on either zero or one, which represents if the comment is toxic or non-toxic. So um, using the vectors from vectorization, we plotted that onto a graph. And then using um, one of the methods from the Python library, we were able to create a logistic model that separated the toxic comments from the non-toxic comments. The third machine learning model is called random forest classification. So this combines multiple decision trees to find the best um, class for our data. So it randomly chose um, data sets for each subset, so for each decision tree, and it um, output a specific class. So tree one, it was class A, tree two, class B, and tree N up to class B. So through this, it aggregated all the votes and found what the majority of the output should be, which then finds it fine finds its final class. So this is really useful when you have a large set of data. And through this, um, by picking at it in different ways, you can find the best class for each output. So after we were we fitted the data with all three machine learning models, um, what we did in, for each model was that we um, figured out an accuracy score based on the accuracy that the comment being put in was being um, that the machine learning model outputted the correct um, output. So if whether it was toxic or not toxic. So based on that, we found that our data showed that the machine learning model that was best for our data would be either naive Bayes or random forest classification. So after we figured out the best ML model, we had to tune it for accuracy. So what we did in this case was we had to tune the hyperparameters or in other words, the characteristics of our machine learning model. So what we did for this for this step, we um, sorted values that were found, we sorted words that would be found in more toxic comments or non toxic comments. So as you can see in the image, um, the words that have been censored out due to um, toxicity have were found to have the highest frequency in those toxic comments and vice versa for non-toxic comments. So words like speaks, entry interested, and et cetera, they were found in comments that weren't really considered that toxic, which makes sense. So after we found our best machine learning model and we tuned the hyperparameters, our next step was to implement it with the web application called Flask. So this is an image of what it looks like, but I can show you actually working. So um, as you can see here, this is our web application. So um, if I were to input a comment that would be considered non-toxic, so something like, you are my hero, which should be considered positive, it would say, thanks for the comment. Um, and if I were to put in a comment that said that was toxic, so um, you are a loser, it would say this comment is negative, you cannot post this. So this shows that the machine learning model is um, recognizing that the comment that I put in the you are a loser has some toxicity levels in it and can't be posted. So it shows that it's actually recognizing that toxicity and the machine learning model is working. So as for lessons learned um, throughout this project for all of us, this was the first time that we ever worked with uh, machine learning or natural language processing. So we learned a lot of different topics and concepts throughout the project. For example, the different types of algorithms. So like we said previously, we utilized the three algorithms, naive Bayes, random tree, and logistic regression. Before this project, we honestly had no idea of that all three of those even existed. So um, we were able to learn different algorithms and different ways that a machine learning model can actually predict. 
So um, that was something that we learned. And we also learned those different concepts, such as tokenization, lemmatization, stemming, stop words, vectorization, cleaning the data, and much, much more throughout this project. So for our further work, um, we aim to make our web application look Flask more user friendly by redesigning the UI or the user interface using HTML and CSS. And we're also very interested in integrating our NLP model into different websites and applications that usually contain commentary features like social media apps, such as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And um, we're also interested in ref further refining our NLP model and creating a more specific purpose to help detect more specific problems like racial slurs or biases within languages and comments rather than just um, detecting toxicity. So this is just our contact information. I'm Divya Sundar. I'm on the very left. Um, my email and my LinkedIn are posted below if you want to contact me. I'm Tracy, and you can contact me through the email or LinkedIn posted on the slide. And my name is Selena Gabriel, and you can also reach out to me through my email or my LinkedIn. And thank you so much for listening to our presentation.